Welcome to video 6.1. Today we're going to talk about what the electron cloud is like. So the principal quantum number, which we're going to use as n, indicates the relative size and energy of atomic orbitals. So that n, what it tells me is it's kind of like your house number. It tells me what energy level that quantum number is on or that electron is on. So these are our principal energy levels. Each energy level has sublevels in it. The first energy level only has one sublevel. The second energy level has two sublevels. The third energy level has three sublevels. And the fourth energy level has, you guessed it, four sublevels. So each of those sublevels has a specific designation. So on the first energy level, with your one sublevel, it's called the S sublevel. On the second energy level, you have two sublevels. You still have the S sublevel, and you also have the P sublevel. The third energy level has three sublevels, so you have the S sublevel again, the P sublevel again, and the D sublevel. And the fourth energy level has four sublevels. You have the S sublevel, the P sublevel, the D sublevel, and the F sublevel. If you notice, the S sublevel shows up every single time. The P sublevel shows up every time for the second, third, and fourth. You cannot have an S sublevel, excuse me, you cannot have a P sublevel without having an S sublevel. D only exists when you are also had S and P, and F only exists when you already had the S, P, and D sublevels. So each of these sublevels exists independent um, on that energy level. One thing to remember is those sublevels are divided into orbitals. So the S sublevel has one orbital, the P sublevel has four orbitals, the D sublevel has five orbitals, and the F sublevel has seven orbitals. They're also shaped differently. The S sublevel is shaped like a sphere. The P sublevel is shaped like a dumbbell, and excuse me, the P sublevel is shaped like a peanut. The D sublevel is shaped like a dumbbell, and the F sublevel is shaped like a flower, like flower petals. So they're going to have different shapes. So if you look at the 1S orbital and the 2S orbital, those have the same shape because they're both the same sublevel, S, um, but 2 is bigger than 1 because it's a bigger number it indicates a larger or higher energy level. The P orbitals, since there are three of them, they are going to be oriented on the X, Y, and Z axes. And then the D sublevels are shaped like dumbbells. So we're gonna draw 1S, 2S, and 2P on the same axis. I'm gonna start off by drawing my axis and trying to keep my computer from going insane. And so I'm gonna start off by, here's my axis. Here's my x-axis, y-axis, and here's my z-axis. And that's supposed to be diagonal. So my first sublevel, 1s, looks like this. And that would mean that I would be most likely to find electrons in the 1s orbital. My 2s orbital would be bigger than my 1s orbital, but it's still a sphere. And then my 2p orbitals. So 2p, remember that p orbitals are shaped like peanuts, and when I draw them, I'm going to draw one on the y-axis. So that's a 2p orbital. One on the x-axis, that's a 2p orbital and one on the z-axis. That's also a 2p orbital. So remember, going back to that, the s orbital is only one. The p orbitals, there are three of them. The d orbitals, there are five of them. And the f orbitals, there are seven of them. I'm only ever going to ask you to draw 1s, 2s, and 2p. So, when we think about this, we also have to look at how many orbitals are related to each principal energy level. So if we go across here, we know that 
when n is our principal quantum number, our sublevels, so the 1s orbital, the 2s orbital, the 2p orbital, the 3s orbital, the 3p orbital, the 3d orbital, and then the 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. You can look at the number of orbitals that are related to each sublevel. Remember that the s orbital always has one sublevel, the p orbitals always have three sublevels, the d orbitals always have five sublevels, and the f orbitals always have seven sublevels. So then you can add those up for each individual quantum energy number, and that tells you the total number of orbitals related to principal energy levels. So what that comes into contact with is that you are mainly talking about the electron cloud. So each orbital will hold two electrons. So that means the S sublevel can hold two electrons because it's got one orbital. The P sublevel could hold six electrons because it's got three orbitals. The D sublevel can hold ten electrons because it's got five orbitals. And the F sublevel can hold 14 electrons because it's got seven orbitals. So we use that information, and this slag right here is going to be really important to remember how many each orbital can hold. We use that information to write what's called an electron configuration. An electron configuration stand is the arrangement of electrons in the atom. So when we are writing electron configurations, we use what's called the Aufbau principle. And the Aufbau or Aufbau principle states that each electron occupies the lowest energy orbital available. What that means is the electrons are going to go where they have to do the least amount of work. So when they have to do the least amount of work, they're going to go in as low as possible. So if I look at this diagram right here, all the electrons really want to be in the 1s orbital because it has the lowest amount of energy. They'd rather be in the 1s orbital than be in the 7p orbital. So they're going to fill the 1s orbital first, then fill the 2s orbital, then fill the 2p orbital, then fill the 3p, 3s, then 3p, then 4s, then 3d, then 4p, then 5s, and on and on and on. So to help us remember how to write electron configurations, we have what's called an Aufbau diagram that comes from the Aufbau principle. It's important to remember with the Aufbau diagram and with, excuse me, with electron configurations and the Aufbau principle and writing Aufbau diagrams is that when you have orbitals that are the same, like 2p orbitals, they're going to be of equal energy that you're going to go S, P, D, F. That's because the P orbitals are of higher energy than the S orbitals. And this last one, the fact that orbitals related to the 4S sublevel have a lower energy than the ones that are have the 3D. So we're going to actually have a very interesting way to fill the orbitals, and sometimes it's going to go a little bit out of order. So when we draw the Aufbau diagram, what you're going to start by doing is you're going to need seven lines on your piece of paper. And on your seven lines, you're going to start with 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, 7s. So those are my seven lines. It's easy to remember that because there are seven periods in our class day. Then after that column's done, I'm going to start with the p orbitals. But remember, does the first energy level have a p orbital? No. So I'm going to start on the second line and go 2p, 3p, 4p, 5p, 6p, 7p. So think about what sublevel comes next. It's the d sublevel. And remember, it doesn't show up on the second energy level. So I'm going to start on the third energy level and go 3d, 4d, 5d, 6d. 
I could put a 7D. I'm not, because theoretically it exists. We don't know that it does. We don't have any elements that heavy that need a 7D orbital. Um, so I'm going to to stop at 6D right here. And then last but not least, we have the F orbitals. And remember, it exists after the D orbitals. And it starts existing on the fourth energy level and then also exists on the fifth energy level. So we're going to have 4F and 4D. I mean, excuse me, not 4D. That should say um, 5F. So that's our out valve, and we could theoretically put a 6F, but we don't have any elements that heavy enough that we have discovered or made yet, so we're going to stop right at that. The way that I remember that F, it only goes with 4 and 5, and those words start with an F. So that is how we draw our out valve diagram. The way that I use it is I'm going to work diagonally from the top right to the bottom left. So I fill the 1s orbital first, then I fill the 2s orbital, and I fill 2s, I mean, excuse me, 2p and 3s, then I fill 3p and 4s, then I fill 3d, 4p, 5s, then I fill 4d, 5p, 6s, then I fill 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, then I fill 5F, 6D, 7P. So, we're going to fill each of those orbitals. Remember that S orbital can hold up to 2 electrons. P orbitals can hold up to 6 electrons. D orbitals can fill up to 10 electrons. And F orbitals can hold up to 14 electrons. So, how does this work? I'm going to write the electron configuration, and it's important to remember that you have to follow the alpha valve diagram. And you've got that energy, lowest energy orbital available, so you want to go to the small, the lowest one. So remember this, it's going to be useful. The Pauli exclusion principle, what it states is that you can only have two electrons in an orbital. They have to have opposite spin. So that looks like this. And Hund's rule states that single electrons with the same spin must occupy each equal energy orbital before additional electrons with opposite spins can occupy the same energy level orbitals. I call this the church bus rule. So what this means is if you have a p orbital, and it can hold up to six electrons. But if you've only got three electrons that can go in it, you got to put one in each of those orbitals before you can go back and pair it up. So thanks so much for your attention, and we'll continue in video 6.2.